the Finder newspaper. Brute police crush, uh, unarmed protesting law students, rubber bullets, water cannons released. Um, Sunyani nursing trainees hail at President Kufuado. MPP condemns police brutality on demonstrating law students. Opuni Agongo lawyers cause yet another delay in proceedings. And the Daily Guide. Professor Jampo trapped in BBC sex video. Bane leaders want Cassius mining out. Baumia marks 56 birthday with the vulnerable and computer hard drives in the Opuni trial missing. The Ghanaian Times. Demo against restricted legal education regime. Police law students clash. Two injured, 13 arrested. Well, we know they've been granted uh, self recognizance bail. Professor Jampo fingered in sex for grades tape but threatens to sue the BBC. Pass Wasi to shame critics. President urges first batch of free SHS students. That will be the third cohort uh, since the program began. My guest this morning in studio is Mr. Richard Ahiaba. He is the Deputy National Communications Director of the NPP. Also, uh, later will join us a rep from the NDC. Sir Rich, good morning. And good how morning. are you doing? I'm quite well. Why are you in black? <clears throat> well, so from yesterday, it was a lot of things happened yesterday, most especially. Mm -hmm the demonstrating students who were brutalized yesterday. I think that was totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. It was savage. The police mm -hmm. appear not to be learning uh, from anything they've been mm -hmm. doing. Recently they've been doing well and we commended them and anytime they take a step forward they take so many backwards. Mm -hmm. And I think yesterday was a very terrible moment for the police mm -hmm. and uh, I hope that the new IGP would uh, look into this. It's very unfortunate. Mm. This is the kind of greeting his men uh, choose to give him. Um, and I think that this should be uh, something that everybody, mm. well-meaning Ghanaians, we condemn roundly. And especially this government, this is a low moment for the police. And mm. I think they sit up <laughs> and going on uh, from here, nothing like this should happen. Citizens have the right to demonstrate. Mm -hmm and they need to shepherd them. That is their uh, responsibility and make sure that they, they, they don't themselves incur any uh, harms like came to them yesterday. And I mm. think that was terrible. The, was terrible. The, the conversation I started this morning was to ask the IGP, as we do know, the IGP is a retiree who is on contract. Now, the police's own regulation says that you will only get a contract after your retirement if you have a special skill that the police cannot do without. And I've been challenging the IDP, IGP to uh, let heads roll. Must heads roll? Absolutely. Mm. I mean, I, I'm not to determine, um, you know, heads roll or not. But I just know uh, that by the look of it yesterday, mm. it's totally in bad taste. It shouldn't have happened. Nobody understands mm. why. I mean... Students with grievances legitimately not against anybody, but with a professional body mm. to regulate and to reform. Mm -hmm. And that by the look of it, by the sound of it, by the objective and motive mm. of those students demonstrating yesterday, there is nothing violent about it. Mm. There was no confrontation inherent in their <laughs> pursuit. Mm. So I am not... Uh, in the least bit convinced that mm. the police would make any case that this uh, peaceful students uh, had created a condition beyond their control mm. such that they'll have to use such brutal force. So if there must be some uh, punishment or some reprisals on the part of the officers who misconducted themselves, mm. then the police service must look into it and come to the appropriate sanctions. But I don't know if health should roll. Mm. I cannot determine for that. Let's look at the um, key pointers in what the demonstrators were looking at. They were complaining about the mass failures. They were complaining about the General Legal Council. And they were also mentioning that, look, they were asked to sign or forced to sign a waiver of their right to call for a remark. Mm -hmm. They were saying that, well, the, uh, the Chief Justice, her ladyship, says, well, he, we can't have a lot of internet lawyers. Mm -hmm. And so they're asking for the Chief Justice you know, to sarcastically give them data, if, if that's what they are calling for. Are their concerns legitimate? Well, you know, I, uh, I am no lawyer. But then just by ordinary understanding of the facts, I think that 
there is some uh, appearance uh, that the law uh, faculty or maybe the pursuit, the law profession in Ghana needs some opening up. And I think that uh, objective minds are at work. And the okay. students, from what I hear mm -hmm. uh, from the president of uh, Ghana uh, Bar Association right. uh, and many others that I've spoken with, they, they seem to recognize the need for that, uh, that reform. Mm -hmm. uh, and so on account of that, I think that uh, careful thought should be given to the grievances and the points they've raised. Mm -hmm. But the only thing also I concede, and in fact, uh, I've heard some of my friends mention to me is the attempt to ensure that they don't water down the profession. Uh, there is some kind of, if you like, uh, cult <coughs> most uh, appearance of the profession mm -hmm. that they prefer to maintain some clout. Mm -hmm. And so that premium uh, has always been with the profession. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that uh, uh, people are in such a hurry to mm -hmm. uh, dissolve that uh, that appearance of prestige around the profession. Uh, be it as it may, we have come a long way and there is a lot of demand uh, of individuals who by every measure have the qualification, they have the drive and can become lawyers. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's open it up and then the market will determine. Uh, speaking strictly as a, a market, uh, uh, you know, uh, person, I think the market would determine quality mm. and market will determine who survives and who doesn't and so let's let's do the needful do the necessary reforms as and as and when it's reasonable but let's not just blockade the process uh, at one point when people are seeking to get inside the stampede is beginning to cause problems okay i have one more question for you but let me quickly introduce for you the honorable member for uh, south dai is the member of parliament for uh, that constituency the honorable Nelson Roxin Eche Kwame Dafiamako. Council, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing, sir? Tired, but okay. No, you survive. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to put a very final question to you where the protesters or the demonstrators say that if 93% of them failed, it is because of a systemic failure and not to pile all the trouble on them. Mm. So the reforms are. Uh, important that we have them now, not in an election year. Yeah. You know, uh, Johnny, I, I, I would sound a bit uh, maybe unaccepting to the students in a, in a way. I, I, just, I just don't want the, uh, the debate to be premised as if, as if we failed and because you are doing something. I want it to be like the legal profession must be opened up. Okay. There must be constructive, acceptable reform measures mm -hmm. put in place mm -hmm. not because 93 percent have failed so open it up then the question then becomes did they fail because they were not able to pass the exam mm -hmm. or did they pay they failed because somebody didn't want them to pass you say there's and a class, that's there's a class system in yes that. yeah th th that has always been there but should it be no that's what i'm saying that we need reform mm -hmm. but let's not situate the reform uh in a confrontational manner let's seek reform constructively because i tell you what i have lawyer friends mm. who inside are saying that yes let's not open it up too much right because then the students who are pushing to open it up when they become lawyers mm. they now see the wisdom <coughs> in not allowing everybody become lawyers mm. so it is a debate that we must have constructively to say that do we have a need to open it up yes do we have increasing needs uh, or increasing students wanting to become lawyers yes mm -hmm. so then in mm -hmm. the context of that let's do something about it so we can open it up mm -hmm. but let's not do it in a confrontational manner to say oh you are failing us because you don't want us to become lawyers mm -hmm. because sooner or later when you become a lawyer you see some sense in that so let's now make a constructive argument to say let's proceed mm -hmm. with reform on account of the fact that the numbers are increasing and we need to open it up so more people who are willing and are able to meet the standard set okay by the general legal council and all, all other regulating bodies to be able to become lawyers it is not that open it up so we we don't fail okay. it is open it up so that the profession will receive the number of people who are able to meet the standards to become lawyers council you know the deficit we have in terms of lawyer uh, versus the population, I mean, in terms of ratio, do the law students demonstrating have 
a legitimate point that we must quickly resolve uh, at this point? Thank you very much. Um, let me use the opportunity to say good morning, customarily, to my Peki Bali Pave Tongo, my constituents, and good morning to my brother here. Um, I speak with a lot of pain. Uh, as a member of the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, mm. and of course the Judiciary Committee of Parliament. Okay. I am well versed with these matters. Now, if we can look at a bit of history. Mm. <coughs> Twelve years ago, I entered law school. <laughs> I was telephoned all over the place to come and pick my admission letter. Mm. In 2007, I speak of 2007. Okay. When you left the faculty mm -hmm. after two years, when you qualify, there was no need for you to write any entrance exam. Okay. You, our details were simply forwarded to the law school. Okay. And we were invited to, as it were, come and pick your letters. Your, your letters. Okay. And pay a token. Now, I think the equivalent of about. 10 cities now, or, okay. or something like that, as admission fee, or 100 cities, something like that. And that, that was all there is. Wow. All there was to it. You began your studies. And this was in 2007? 20, 20 2017, as, as recently as 2007. Seven. Okay. So I completed in 2009. Okay. Now, the law school before we went there mm. had a structured program. If we want to talk about quality, it, it is not an argument. Because the law school had a way of getting good materials all the time. Okay. They run a program they call prelims. So you, you could do prelim one, prelim two, preliminary one, preliminary two. Okay. When you qualify, mm -hmm. then you proceed to professional one, professional two. Okay. And then you are called you to are the bar. It was their way of getting persons who had obtained first degrees, okay. non-law, non-LLBs, mm. mm. to also come and study the professional course and get called to the bar and practice the vocation. Okay, so by prelim one and two, after that you will be that solidly grounded. Yes, to they use the they course. use that that course as an equivalent to the LLB. So the okay. courses that were taught at the LLB level mm. were actually the courses that they were teaching. Are prelim one and two okay all right so it was helpful there are a lot of high court judges superior in fact superior court judges who went through that process okay and they are doing extremely well now when the faculties were decided to also reform from admitting straight llbs mm -hmm. to adding to admitting first degree non-law graduates mm -hmm to come and read the LLB two years, then naturally the numbers increased. Okay. So I think the law school began to introduce the, the, the entrance exams in about 2013, mm -hmm. when we had long gone. But they, these were not the kind of difficulties that there were. So what they did was they again reformed when we enter law school in 2007, mm -hmm. they reformed it. They, they stopped the prelim program. Okay. And, and were admitting directly from the faculties because Tech 2 had begun to produce LLB graduates. Okay. So they could get the numbers to complement those that were, we were coming from the faculty. Okay. So there was no need for law school to run the prelims. Okay. Now, when they were, as the years rolled by, when they began to experience the, the the huge numbers okay. they did what they call reforms and the reform was that they shifted mm -hmm. or they pushed some of the near academic programs like company law taxation mm -hmm. all those ones mm -hmm. that we studied at the law school okay. to the faculties and as the faculties to now do professional one of the prof of the two year professional programs. Okay. So students mm -hmm. were now leaving the faculties to come and do only one year one at the year. law school. And then you are called to the bar. And then you are called to the bar. But it was a nice program. Mm -hmm. But then again I don't know what happened. But I got to know 
that there were accusations of persons having access to exam questions before the mm -hmm. you know about four years ago right exactly so as, exactly so again there had to be reforms so they then decided that they will bring back the the two professional year programs back to the law school mm. but the other reform they undertook was to now establish the board of legal education now sought to establish what they call the an independent examination board mm. which meant that students that for instance i was lectured by lecturers like Isan Kuma in in in, in Kwame Tete mm -hmm. and uh Pukwajima in evidence and uh, the late Justice Badu in criminal mm -hmm. procedure and all they will examine me okay but the new system that they introduced meant that lecturers who were teaching the professional courses mm -hmm. were no longer determining the fate of students what's the difficulty with that I have no difficulty but the queer issue will be that where you know that a, a student is particularly good mm. and we've all been teachers or lecturers before mm. i know the capabilities of my students in class and outside and all that it's a professional program right you can get sick during exams i may not do well at the, within that three hour paper period okay your test score may fall yes <laughs> So, or I'll, if I see that this is your script and I look at your marks, I will have to find out what the hell was going on. Because in class, you are, you are good. You are superb. Your assignments are good. You understand? So, lecturers should have a way of just to assess their own students. In any case, we do IAs. Mm. That's a continuous assessment program. Right. We write IAs. And that is about 40% of the 60, 60 of the 100%. Correct. So, if teachers had no role in determining your fate at the end of the day why do you introduce continuous assessment component to the curriculum assessment mm. so they moved the marking of the scripts to the members of the IAB mm. so where there were issues lecturers had no say and that also generated a lot of problems. And I'll cite one instant. Last Tell year. Tell me. Or earlier this year, you heard that only 17% of those who wrote the bar exams mm -hmm. passed. That's correct. So 83% had failed. Final year students exiting the law school. Then the chief justice is on record to have made a very pronounced statement. And I want to refer to that. She says, the practice of the law is not a noble profession. It is the noble profession. Those of you lawyers and those of you lecturers who are busy advocating free scale mass admissions into the professional law course and mass production of lawyers, be careful what you wish for. So long as I have anything to do with it, it won't happen. So when you situate this comment to the kind of things happening, it appears as if there's a deliberate attempt. Mm -hmm. Even if I were in the, in the position of the candidates and the, and the prospective students, mm -hmm. I'll make an inference because we are, we are trained to make such, such deductive reasoning. Like the door has been shut in your face? Yes. As a deliberate policy. Because you see, when the issue came up last year mm -hmm. and they petitioned our committee, and we heard them even this year, one of the allegations was that they would deliberately charge high to remark their papers. They would take the monies and still fail the students. But what did you do about it? Your now, party? my committee listened to both parties, the students, the members of the Board of Legal Education, the IAB and all. Mm -hmm. And we determined that 3,000 3, cities that they were charging, for instance, mm -hmm. to remark a single paper was too much. Because, because how much they're charging? Yes, because some students fail in as many as four papers five papers in fact one student told me he paid fifteen thousand and when they remarked he had he still he had filled all so six papers no five that's three okay, so three, three thousand five. three five fifteen right sure. so we advise that they should go back review that figure and charge at least or a maximum of 500 ghana did they do it they disregarded the committee's recommendations wow they went ahead committee of parliament they went ahead charged the three thousand marked the papers 
they refused to release their results until a week to taking that exam again. The students are around. They, they are listening so to So it me. means if you failed, you, you wouldn't have ample time to prepare. Exactly. Because a remark is supposed to have been done expeditiously. So you know your faith. Because the remark was in respect of some persons to qualify to be called to their bar. Right. And now even the call to their bar has also been structured in a very funny way. When you leave law school now, you are not called to their bar. You are you will have to go and do your pupilage. Right. In our time, you were called to their bar immediately. Then you go and do your minimum of six months in, in, a, in a chamber. In a chamber okay. of your choosing. Mm. And then after that, you are issued with your uh, practitioner's license. Mm. But now you leave the law school, you go and do your pupilage, and then when you are done, then you are now called to the bar. You know? And so the, the reforms that the law school itself sought to introduce is not helping. So some of us are of the opinion, contrary to what the Chief Justice holds though, mm -hmm. that the lecturers who lecture in the academic courses are equally capable of lecturing in the professional programs. And therefore, we should begin to allow the faculties mm -hmm. to train their lawyers. And let us write one national biasm so that if, for instance, I am based in Kumasi, I don't have to come to Accra to, to get trained as a lawyer. Okay. I should be able to attend the faculty, get admitted to the faculty of law mm -hmm. at Tech. After my LLB, I should be able to train professionally at the same faculty because all the facilities for me to go through my professional training at the faculty of law, University of Science and Technology, exist in Kumasi. The cost exists. Why is it difficult for us to do? If doctors can do it, uh, you can have doctors get admission into into uh, tech. Um, they go to if, if you are uh, well uh, and do the, and do their and, and do their husbandship everything and then they get called. Why can why can lawyers? Because the status quo, I, I want to believe, serves some interest. Because it, it's baffling. Look at the multitude. Do you know one thousand eight hundred and twenty something students failed just this year? The end. Do you know how much they paid to write the entrance exams? For me, it's become like a cash cow. Mm. Because if you know, if you know that you are capable of training only 200 lawyers mm. every year, use academic standards. Say that, well, because of the situation, mm. if you don't have a first class in LLB, don't apply. If you don't have a second upper, don't apply. Mm. Or even if you apply, we'll look for some other further documents mm. as a mark of assessment. When you purchase the forms to enter the professional program, these are the standards. You think everybody gets up and go to Harvard or Oxford? Because there are standards. standards. So use the standards. Don't 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 let don't let people pay money to write exams. And the marking of the exams is so murky, you don't even know the the, the, the marking scheme. They're asking for the general legal counsel to be scrapped. What do you say? You see, the, the General Legal Council is, is, is not the one truly in charge of the legal education. Who is? The board? The board of legal education. That's the mistake. Mm. The General Legal Council is in charge of rather disciplining lawyers. Mm. But we, have, we, have, we, we crafted the law in such a way that the membership of the General Legal Council is made up of institutional representations and mostly judges. Okay. <clears throat> and the Board of Legal Education, too, is also made up of institutional representations and mostly judges. So it is the Board of Legal Education that should take up this matter. The General Legal Council plays a role in terms of discipline and all that. Mm -hmm. But until you leave the law school, you will have you have no business dealing with the General Legal Council. The problem, however, is that mm -hmm. the membership of the new AIB is also made up of judges and retired judges. What's the challenge there? The challenge I'm saying, for instance, if you are a Supreme Court judge, mm -hmm. you retire on your salary, and you are a member of the AIB, you are earning salary, it raises constitutional issues. Right, right. 
Right. You, you understand me? Right. There, there, there's a lot of confusion in the system. Where do we go from here? Now, what we have to do is that there must be a deliberate policy to take care of the backlog as a matter of practical solution. Then going forward, you can decide that if you have a second lower, well, too bad. If you have a third class, well, too bad. But you see, the proof of the padding is in the eating. So somebody could get a pass and train professionally. When you meet them in court, you run. They become letter writers. No. And bail lawyers. No. They become outstanding lawyers. Okay. People rather who make the first class, they move into corporate, into academia and all. And I didn't get a first class in law. But when I was in practice, I think I was doing extremely well. Because... The person under whom I trained, Togbe Hodo, Charles Haibo, mm. the kind of training he gave us ensured that we did quality job in court. Right. So every lawyer agrees that it is not the first class that makes you a good lawyer mm. at all. Mm. In fact, there are a lot of legal principles you appreciate them better when you move into practice. Okay. And, it, it, and it is so with a lot of professional programs. Mm. So the 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 academic the, the, the premium on, on quality, quality, quality to the entrance into the law school is good. Mm. But what about those that you train at the end of two years and yet they are unable to pass? And my brother, I think you agree with me. Look, in any normal program there should be a bell shape. You must have a few who are outstanding mm. who belong to the upper quarter. And you must have a few who will be daft. But the general above average should fall in the belly of the bear. Mm. It goes up like that and comes down. But what is happening in the law school is, is sad. Fine, Look, pe people live here, they go to Rwanda, they go and qualify quickly. Right. They go to Nigeria, they pass the federal bar or the state bar, wherever they find themselves, and they get called. Mm. Now, we used to train Gambian lawyers and their judges. Now, Ghanaians are going to Gambia to get trained by Gambian School of Law and Sierra Leone. Okay. Counsel. It's a tragedy. So, my, my final one to you. When they, they, uh, they flatly uh, disobeyed the decision of the committee in parliament not to charge 3,000 per paper uh, for remark and 500, what happened to them? You see... The, the response we got from the Board of Legal Education was that they are not bound by what we say, our recommendation, and that it is only a recommendation. They can disregard it. They didn't say so disregard. Okay. But it meant that if you we if we, if, if, if we came before us on a matter that the Speaker of this Republic mm -hmm. was petitioned, and he referred this matter to the appropriate committee, which was my committee. Mm. And we make recommendations. And plenary debated the report. And passed a resolution on the report and adopted it as part of the issues discussed in the chamber. Mm. And it is directed at you as a legal entity. Mm. And you disregard it. Well, it's supposed to constitute contempt of parliament. But we, have, we will never trigger it. And so these are some of the, the issues. Is that not what is giving perhaps the impetus to, to go ahead with the way they have Absolutely. Done? Because they think that nobody can check them. So trigger your checks. Well, we'll look at that. <laughs> Rich, you want to top up a bit? Yes, this, well, uh, you know, I um, well, thank my, that, my brother. Also, thank for, you very, for, for the education. Uh, for going through... Uh, so this, the picture is, is seemingly clear, and we know what. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm no lawyer, but then I know that uh, the people who are in charge of uh, legal education are aware and are seeking to proceed with caution, mm -hmm. purely from an economic standpoint, utility value <laughs> of being a lawyer. If you open it up from what the Chief of Chief Justice was talking about, it's purely a rational argument he's making. I, not that I support or oppose, but what I'm trying to say is that the utility value of being a lawyer mm. uh, would diminish 
okay if it's just open flat out everybody come in and okay. the way that they're seeking to do it so there is a conscious uh inherent understanding that there must be some guards put around it mm. and in seeking to advance a conversation that leads to addressing the current situation there is a need to be intentional mm. be uh, intentional and planning the process such that we don't just totally vanquish the space because when that happens you won't see the same numbers rushing to become law, law, uh, lawyers in this country. I have always used the uh, communication centers that we've had some time ago mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. When you allow, everybody will have it to the extent it's no longer profitable, mm -hmm. that you make your own call from your call center and nobody comes and it collapses. Mm -hmm. So there is a need for intentional approach to this and the students, I think, have a legitimate concern, okay. but of course the managers also have a concern. Mm -hmm. So there must be a dialogue to see how we proceed in the best interest of both sides. Because soon after you transition from being a student, you become a lawyer, you appreciate that position much more because this is uh, a uh, uh, situation that I've had with okay. uh, my lawyer friends. And I think that there must not be uh, a plan uh, approach to eliminate people at the terminal end. This must be defined. The reform must be out there. Everybody must know it. Mm -hmm. So when you choose to go into the profession, you know these are the standards. Okay. And this is what I have to do. Kaza. And if I can do it, then I'll become a lawyer. Go, go over this. Yes. Um, thank you. You see, that idea that we have too many lawyers is completely erroneous. There's a deficit. I, I, I'm not saying... No, no, I know, I know, but... But, okay. but there's a deficit. Yes! No, that, that we have too many lawyers, rather. You, you speak of a deficit. Right. A deficit means shortfall. Exactly, and that is what the reality is. Yes. So, so any attempt to say that we are producing too many lawyers is absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. Look, we have over 254 metropolitan and municipal mm -hmm. and district assemblies. Right. They do not have legal departments. Go and read the, 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 the Auditor General's report. Mm -hmm. Most of the infractions contained in those reports mm -hmm. are as a result of non-compliance by bureaucrats. If you, they had leg, legal departments manned by a two, three-man lawyer team, mm -hmm. they would have been helping solve some of these matters. Right. But they do not. And that's a huge source of employment for lawyers. Sure. The attorney general's department are supposed to have district prosecutors, district mm -hmm. attorneys, mm -hmm. to, to prosecute cases. They don't have them. Even some of the regional offices are woefully understaffed mm. because we don't have adequate lawyers to fill those positions. So we need more. We need more lawyers, actually. Okay. Thank you very much. Bella is uh, here. Bella, welcome back. Thank you very much. Okay. I was actually enjoying the discussion. What, what Thank are, you for breaking down the system <laughs> at the law school for me. Right. But let's see what people are saying. Um, on social media. So this is James from Labadi. Good morning, TV3. Hmm, is Ghana really safe? If protesters uh, who could protest without arms or weapons were treated like thieves, then I fear for the future. Sometimes I wish the earth would just open and swallow these wicked people. We're not able to, uh, the wicked people we're not able to identify mm -hmm. and prosecute. John Neal and Tevan says, the million dollar question is, under what orders did the police attack the protesters? I've ardently followed this story um, of the protesting law students right from the onset. And I can boldly say the protest was never a violent one. I think it's about time the police elevate the level of professionalism in discharging their duties because what they did yesterday was absolutely questionable and inhumane. It's very unfortunate how the credibility of our police service has in recent times been brought under heavy public scrutiny. They should send them a signal. Demonstration is not illegal, by the way. Or is it? Okay. Ayu Farouk Tamale constituency, the sex for great saga is alarming in our universities. Something must be done. But why? Uh, but BBC, why always Africa? Okay, good morning, Mr. Host. Johnny Hughes is his name. I'm in shock and frightened to see the police in the manner in which the law students were subjected and treated like common criminals. Policing under this government is alarming and dangerous. And if proper measures are not put in place to reform them, they will one day put this country in, uh, well, into disrepute, maybe more like that. A peaceful demo turns to a battlefield between an armed law-abiding citizens versus unprofessional armed police officers. And what worries me is how this government is over-pampering them and being silent on the unaccepted, unacceptable attitude 
of the police from Abdul Fatal Tamale. The unprofessional conduct of the police and the discharge of their duties is really worrying. Yesterday's brutality is meted out to the law students who were advocating for reforms in the Ghanaian legal education regime must be condemned in no uncertain terms. I feel really embarrassed by the show of power by the police service. However, I'm more scandalized by the political twist by some people ostensibly to draw the president into this issue. Hmm, politics. That's from Kwesi Reynolds in Agona or Dobbing. And if they know what they are, uh, and if they know that they are to pick 200 people to join the bar, they shouldn't have taken them uh, more in the first year. Okay, kudos to the MP inside your studio. He is doing extremely well. That's it, Johnny, Thank for you, now. Brother. Yeah. Let's talk about the cold room experience. Um, as uh, the Nigerian professor put it, um, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Ayaba. So, so this is what we have. The BBC has exposed two of our university dons, um, some from Unilag as well. There have been many schools of thought. One that says, look, the BBC is targeting our best universities to probably discredit them and get some more people into their investors because a lot of Nigerians and Ghanaians usually will go to the UK to study. Others are saying, look, this is an eye opener and it tells their true story of how female students are pressed down, harassed, and sex is taken from them without their say so. Others say, look, the students are lazy, they don't read, so they find an easy way out to get the grade. And if we don't take care, we may be producing uneducated graduates who will not uh, give us the development we are looking for. What do you say? Well, Johnny, this issue, first of all, is totally disheartening. And we need, it's one of those issues that without evidence or just by the sound of it, you condemn it and then look for the evidence. I think the Unilag, yep. <laughs> Unilag, <laughs> Un, Unilag actually took that position mm. that they will not accept a conduct like that. And so therefore, they went ahead to suspend the professor in, involved, or I think, I don't know if it's one or two over there. Mm. Uh, and then they are going to go ahead and investigate the process. Uh, the painful thing um, uh, in, in, in the way events are unfolding here in our country uh, is, is very shocking to me. What, what is it that you Today, don't like? I mean, I, I, I hear this thing that people are saying, or people in charge uh, who have something to do with this are saying, oh, we have to see evidence and all of these things. This is unacceptable. You are innocent that those individuals guilty. involved must be said to go home. We sit in this country when there's anything within the political domain. We say people have the moral standing to say, "Oh, let this man do this. Let him resign. Let him do this." What about this thing? When people's, I mean, our sisters, potentially our wives, okay, are abused in that manner. And then you tell me that you want some kind of evidence and you, you are saying, oh, because it's not a student. That logic um, is lost on me. Why do you, you, say, you said a student come to you because he's not your student, you're not going to give him a grade, so therefore it's okay for you to prey on the person? The context in which the relationship ensued uh, was that the person is somebody whom you are powerful over, whom by your position can do or undo the person. That's a context. Mm. So we're not interested whether the person is a student or not a student. The argument the professor is making, totally bankrupt. Why are you telling me that somebody come to you seeking help, which you have the power to do, and you are trying to use that power over the person to abuse the person, and you tell me that because he became a friend? Bankrupt logic. He wants to so I am saying that these individuals, by virtue of this thing, mm. for their own dignities, they should leave those offices they are in and be exonerated and we the people will say let them go back because he hasn't done anything wrong this thing is so terrible don't sit there and try to rationalize to us that it wasn't a student so it became a friend and whatnot this doesn't sound good it smells bad should not be encouraged i don't see why the the the, the university uh, i think there's a committee Despite on sexual health. harassment and they are saying we want to see evidence what evidence do you want to see are you not aware that this thing happens they know this thing happens. So why are you sitting there trying to make it sound as if now you want some fresh evidence and this is coming out of space and you've not heard it before? Terrible. 
Okay, counsel, what do you say? Uh, innocent unto proven guilty. Would you stick with that principle? That is the sacrosanct principle we know. Mm -hmm. And it's constitutionally um, um, granted that you are innocent until a court of competent jurisdiction says otherwise. And, uh, you know, yesterday I, I came to this conclusion that my friends in the MPP will be very careful in dealing with this matter. Because, you see, just two weeks ago, mm. the president told us that he wouldn't sack, he wouldn't simply sack his appointees who, who, against whom allegations have been made. Right. They will have to be, that allegation will have to be established. So when I hear says that they want to go home. He says, he says <laughs> condemn it and then look for the evidence. He says the professor should go home yeah. for now. Mm. You know, but, but, but the two of them actually, there's Dr. Butako, <coughs> exactly, yeah. and but, Professor Jampo. But, but, but it, it, I'll leave, I'll, I'll, yeah, everybody's focusing on I'll Professor leave Jampo. the tangential no, because, matters because there's a reason. What's the reason? The reason is that you see, matters like this by, by my training, you don't speak. Jampo should have sought the services of a lawyer, okay, straight away. Uh, you see, the matter broke, I think, on, on Saturday, right? It was all over social media that BBC was going to. Days and that's some university. Initially, they said West Africa, then they zero in on University of Ghana. Mm. Then by Sunday, they began to mention his name and one other man. Right. So, what do you do? You have to be on the alert. Procure the services of some lawyers who look at this and advise your position. But he decided to be garrulous, to be speaking to the issues in a very discordant way. I, I pity him because he's such a vitriolic critic. He, he told my chairman that he should, the Pentecost chair should suspend him. Of a sort of yes, a, that they should suck him from... Tape. Yes, <clears throat> allegations. He, he, he said that Nyantechi was Nyantechi's reaction to allegations under the... the uh, number, two, number 12. Number 12. His reaction was like that of a schoolboy. You see, mm. when you are chewing the hands of a, of a monkey, the elders say you must be careful, for that could be your fingers. Okay. Yeah, look at your fingers, because you could be chewing your own fingers. Right. When you live in a glass house, you don't throw stones. I, look, I left university about 20 years ago, mm. 2000, University of Cape Coast. These matters have always been with us. Even with professors, you know, those day professors are, they are grizzly people, people with gray hair and all. There were issues. But I think what is, what is, what, why people are scandalized about the sheer numbers. Okay. It's even worse in the private universities. Must, must we continue like that? No. But the point I'm making is that it's even worse in the what, what would What would instigate that? This, you see, this, these are social deviants. And if you have some reading in sociology, you will appreciate it. Right. Look, even some time ago in practice, mm. this matter arose in the judiciary. Judges in chambers. Mm. Not simply that people influence cases by money. But, but there were issues of sexual harassment cases. Mm. It happens in workplaces. Look, I was just um, uh, gifted auntie's husband, Nana Ansakwa. Nana Ansakwa was my friend. Mm. He sent me some programs that the wife did sometime last year. Okay. She actually did the program on this matter, says for grades and for jobs. Okay. She, she, the she title was, two, yes. Two together. And you can, you, can, you can go out, your station should be able to go and delve into these matters in, within the uh, bureaucracies. When young ladies are applying for jobs, the kind of things they go through. So it is, it's, it's, it's become a social matter. But you see, be careful you don't fall a victim mm. or you don't become the exposed perpetrator. Isn't everybody at a risk? Now that we have the Me Too coming up, 
I was also I harassed in school. Exactly. Uh, exactly. People will begin to speak because there's an opening. People begin to ventilate. People have the opportunity to ventilate things that they've bottled up for ages. Mm. And I tell you on authority that when we were in the University of Cape Coast as student leaders between 1998 and 2000, mm. some of these matters occurred. The, the effect will... On, to on the extent a whole master, a whole master had to be to be removed for mm. alcohol, if I recall. So I'm only saying that it's always been with us. But you see, the person who is in the center of, of the storm, of okay. in the eye of the storm now, is because he's such a vitriolic, such, you know, such, such a top academic, mm. and and also finds space in the in the in the body polity. Mm. Why is it that the other the other lecturer, <laughs> virtually every like he said, everybody is forgotten him mm. because he hasn't spoken a word. Perhaps he's considering his options, and that's the golden rule in these matters. I pity Professor Banku and uh, Jampo. Mm. I pity him. Because no matter the excuses, the defenses you put up, mm. you will sink. And when you are sinking, you don't struggle. You, don't struggle. Yeah. you know, Danny. <sighs> so, Richard, yeah. I, I understand also that he sits on uh, some boards in government. If you're asking that he leaves the university, would he leave the boards as well? Yes, in institutional representation. I don't think that he does so yeah. on his, right. on his, his own. own, yeah. on his own that, does his he own leave as well? If yeah, you're asking Johnny, for, for him to walk. Yes, Johnny. I, I'm I am, trying to. I am actually. Let him fill in I am actually point. saying this not because it's Professor Jumpo, right? But I am saying this because it's a kind of behavior that we should not tolerate. Okay. And then when it, you it happens for HRs and interns, yes, HRs yes, and across workers, board, across uh, board, marketing managers using their staff for as uh, sex baits, yeah. and all of that. Uh, well. So, so, so the point is that as a society, we mm. need to internalize some of these values are not okay for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering where are the That's Beijing platform uh, <laughs> advocacy? Mm -hmm. Where, where is that energy? Okay. Where is that? desire to ensure that at least our women are protected okay the idea is that look it's not only because of the abuse mm. which watching your video could be catastrophic for the individual some of them right. because you become so dehumanized you become so undermined in a way that you don't see yourself well mm. and this is a degree you're going to stay with the rest of your life and you all you know at every instance that probably I didn't merit what I'm holding. So and some, beyond some, that, somebody says, if Professor Jampo goes, Dr. Butako goes, yeah. and they decide not to go down alone yeah. and to co provide a comprehensive list of the people who have benefited from this from them, yeah. then they lose their degrees because fraud vitiates all. Well, I mean, I, let, let the chip fall where they may. But the mm. point is that we cannot be fearing the uh, incidental you know, casualties by condoning mm. the bad behavior. What, inst what initiates this conduct is the bad behavior. Okay. Okay? Mm. And that bad behavior must be dealt with at core. This kind of soothing gradualism of saying that, oh, let's not do it because it will cascade and all of those things should not precede what must be addressed. Okay. And I'm saying that take away, Professor Jampo, from the equation. The conduct is totally unacceptable. We should fight it. And I'm, I want to hear women voice out on this thing. Women stand and say, this is not okay. I've been hearing since yesterday. People are saying, yes, I have seen that. Yes, I've been there. Yes, I've heard that. Now speak out so that once and for all we can address this issue. Okay. So that we don't see women out there as objects. We see women as equal partners trying to build this country. That's where we must go. Okay. Uh, well, Council has uh, afforded me the opportunity to use this phone to share this information with you. The sexual harassment and misconduct policy of the University of Ghana. It says, uh, this is how they define sexual harassment. Uh, it says, it says, this is defined as an unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature, including unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal, non-verbal, written, electronic, graphic, or physical conduct or behavior of uh, nature when, uh, well, blah, blah, blah. And that's so, the University so, of Ghana exactly. sexual policy. So, so, so this, will, this, this will encapsulate, I will kiss you violently and your shyness will go away. <laughs> Correct? Yes, indeed. <laughs> 
yeah. I think maybe you share with yes, me afterwards. Yes, yes, but you yes. know, Johnny, I, 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 I agree that, and then with my, my brother, that we should proceed with caution. But this issue is one such thing that I'm, since from yesterday, you are hearing from the woodworks people who have been exposed to it. And I'm saying that if it's not good today, it's not good tomorrow. It doesn't matter who is in the center of it. And the idea that maybe some BBC thing, they're orchestrating this to probably direct the flow of students to what their investors, that probably may be incidental. Should, should I don't we, see we, the validity Should we, should we get in there yeah. and do an overhaul of the system? We should, we should have all these professors sign, okay? A disclosure, like, if this behavior would not be occasioned by me, but if it does, there is no arguing anything. I'm walking. Okay. Okay? So that people are, whole, are held to higher standards to make sure that they go there and give a, create a platform for our women to come and compete, for the men to come and compete, so that the product there has implication for the development of this country. Right. So whoever comes out from there, we know they are assets, because that's what we're investing in uh, to be able okay. to create human capital for this country. So we must have that human capital, that intervention, that distortion there by conduct by of this some of this individual is affecting the national investment we're making in our people and that must be stopped some of the ladies told me counsel that uh, the teaching assistants are even more wild than the lecturers themselves <laughs> the teaching assistants who uh, who have access to the yeah, scripts yes let me uh, let me say this let me put this on record this is a national tv somebody wrote in fact is is flying the lad gold hat no, okay. not that. Okay. Somebody actually mentioned that Jampo began as a TA. Wow. And even as a TA, some of these issues had emerged in 2001 and two. You know, he graduated, he entered the university in 98 to 2001. Right. A four-year program. Right. And I think he got a first class, so he was retained by the, by the department okay. as a TA. These things had emerged. They read their ugly head 18 years ago. Do you understand my right. point? So, I am not sitting here to justify its conduct. But I am only saying that it has become so endemic. It's even in our churches. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's even in our churches. The pastors you know, and the choir. This members. matter, is, as part of the law school issues, it's also... It's also <laughs> there's, and, there's something you Yes! Wow. It's sexual, sex for grace matter. It's also in the middle somewhere, even in the law school. The students come to me when they file the petition. They, some of us who, who have been consistent in speaking on the law school matters, mm. they bring us things. Wow. Further documents, text messages to prove, to establish that aside. Look, you could be failed because you, you refused. And what is horrible is that there are some women who have actually granted. Okay, so why not you? Why, no, 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 why can't you grant? Exactly, but I'm saying that some. They would forward uh, emotional offer. trauma mm. because they, they fell. Yeah, it's <sighs> terrible. They fell. This one is just the husband. The person resisted. Okay. So she's able to after after she's been able to act with you, she she's strong enough to speak about the issue. Mm. What about the hundreds and the thousands yeah. who fell? Who fell? Yeah. Who couldn't defend themselves? Yeah. That's what the casualty is, you know. Okay. And there's a lot also in the science. Yeah. Wow. Well, if you leave on up, I think he, he's going to go on and listen. Well, uh, but the point, is, is yes, yeah. the point of it is just that this thing must be fought. Whether or not it cuts across society, let's deal with it. I'm not necessarily saying let's punish people. Okay, we should punish people. But there must be a way that in this society we said that is not okay. That is not okay. And somebody told me jokingly that yesterday, even when the BBC video was showing, perhaps some lecturer was in some corner, in some cold room with somebody. <laughs> it's possible. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Council. So the the uh, Nigerians have graduated with their cold <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. I they, like, like, they, I like, they like nomenclature. I ain't, ain't going to ours are called laptops. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> theirs are called cold rooms. Where whoever brought the technology is better. Thank you very much. The Honorable uh, Roxin Nelson Eche Kwame Tafiamako is the uh, Member of Parliament representing the N and, uh, DC this morning, and Richard Ayagba representing the MPP. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Enjoy your Tuesday.